Hi, I'm Mike. I live in San Diego and I'm an advocate of a resource-based economy, moving toward that direction. And I support uh, organizations that advocate that as well, such as the Venus Project and the Zeitgeist Movement here in San Diego. And this city system, this model city that you're looking at today is actually extrapolated from the uh, concepts and designs of Jacques Fresco of the Venus Project. Well, this is a model sustainable city system of the future. And, um, you know, we designed this model this way because, you know, if you look at the world condition today, that over half the world's population lives in city systems. And it's estimated that right around 2030, 60% of the world's population is going to be living in city systems. And there's a direct correlation with the uh, amount of poverty in the world as well. Over half of the world's population lives in a state of poverty. So being that this is a social unit of humanity, it's extremely, extremely important to design our city systems in an intelligent manner to make things available for people. This particular city system itself ha has a carrying capacity of 100,000 people. It's modeled after the city in which I live in, in El Cajon, in San Diego. And El Cajon has a population of the same thing, 100,000 people, but they're, they're using uh, 14 square miles. This city system, if you do the math on it, the radius is 1.5 miles, so that means the whole distance from one point to the other is three miles. And, you know, a simple formula for the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, and you figure out the math on it, Basically, that's telling us that we have seven area miles that we can build this in. So we're right off the bat, we're cutting urban sprawl in half, and uh, you're tackling also social problems and environmental problems, because there's no people sleeping on the streets anymore, there's no environmental degradation. Well, this is the central dome of the city. This is where most of uh, the social interaction occurs. It's also the transportation hub, which you see the white lines going uh, linear and the white lines going radial as well. So these, are, these represent all monorail transportation systems that correlate right here in the city uh, center. And um, also, you know, people come here for you know, shopping, um, education, healthcare, general social interaction and product availability as well. Coming outside from the center, you see these little domes here. These represent art, music, science centers, entertainment centers, really little education hubs. And then as you move out, you have the different color sectors. These are industrial areas, which is also or, or, um, apartment structures in there as well on the outer edges, because there's a recreational belt where people can go and hang out, play racquetball, uh, little tennis courts, nice little nature setting. But these industrial areas here really focus on the disciplines. So for example, if you wanted to contribute your time in say uh, agriculture, you may live and work in this area. Um, housing and shelter technology production, uh, medicine, healthcare, technology advancement, recycling, that kind of thing. So these focus on disciplines. As you move further out in the city, I'm noticing these. What are they used for? As you move out from the internal recreation area, you have the housing district. And you can see there's winding streams in there. And the housing district is designed to allow people to live in a, in a setting that's an outdoorsy type of environment, but yet you're still in a city. So people who prefer to live in houses may live in this sector. And then as you move outwards, then you have apartment sectors for people who prefer apartment dwelling. And that's also entwined with the energy belt, which in this case, these are solar panels surrounding the whole city. Uh, of course, depending on the geographical location of any city area, you know, we may be using geothermal, wind, or wave power. It just depends. Okay, moving on from the energy belt. We have the agricultural belt. As you can see, these domes, you know, this is where we're growing food. And then we have outside agriculture, soil base. And if you look here, this represents a vertical skyscraper hydroponic food production system. And so the belt surrounds the entire city, so we're growing food for all the inhabitants of the city. And then moving on from the agricultural belt, we have a waterway that surrounds the city. And these structures here, they represent atmospheric water harvesting generators and solar distillation units as well. 
With water atmospheric generators, we can actually pull in the water out of the air and create potable drinking water out of that. And moving on from there, we have the outer perimeter. This is the recreational belt where people may come and do you know, various activities, including dirt biking or mountain biking. And if you notice here, we have these gray domes. There's four of them in the city system. These represent sports domes where you can play football, baseball, soccer. And on the outside of these areas, you have more apartment structures for people who prefer living in a more outdoorsy type of environment, but yet still prefer apartment living. And then of course, moving on from the recreational belt is everything goes back to nature. So this represents a balance with technology and nature. So the circular shape of the city represents the most efficient use of resources and energy as well and transportation. So what we did here is we designed one section. There's eight sections on the city. So you just design one section and then copy it seven times. So that's the most efficient use of resources, efficient use of time, designing, management, makes it very easy. So the industrial sectors of the city focus on the disciplines and you can see that's the area and color here. And you can see here's another area of focus, industrial sector, and then another one, and another one. And we have eight total. They all focus on particular disciplines such as transportation, housing and shelter technology, energy, clean, efficient, sustainable energy, medicine and healthcare, recycling and waste management, education and awareness, agriculture and water production, advancements in technology. We can build this city right now if we wanted to. We could have built this city uh, decades ago, but you know that we have a lot of very strong barriers right now, particularly in the monetary structure and many other corporate interests as well. But if we decide to do it, we can do it right now.